In this lab, we will be studying a chemical reaction at equilibrium between two complex ion formations of cobalt. Because they form complex ions with water and or chloride ions very favorably, we can see which side of the reaction is favored by the color changes due to crystal field theory, which is not part of this um, lab. But we're going to be studying Le Chatelier's principle and noticing at equilibrium, if a stress is made, let's say a stress is made that forces the reaction to go thermodynamically to the right, we should be able to see a nice blue color because the reactants get used up and will make more products, which will be, of course, that complex with the chloride ion, as chloride ion with that ligand. And of course, back at equilibrium, if we do something that favors the reverse um, reaction where we're going to make more of the um, red by using up the reactants and we will make more of the cobalt complex that has the water surrounding it as the ligand which will be red we can observe these shifts in equilibrium so let's get started so just to show you uh, this is the color or baseline colors of the cobalt complex with water and this is the color nice blue color of the cobalt complex uh, with the chloride ion. So clearly you can see who's favored and by looking at these colors. And this is, I believe, a purple color, although I have a difficult time with colors, of the equilibrium mixture of both. Alright, so we're going to put out some test tubes here and we're going to follow our procedure as follows. So here's our four test tubes. And again, right now we see the pink color, so all these test tubes currently have a lot more of the reactants and products as by the uh, pink color favoring the copper complex with water. So we're going to be in our first test and we're going to just uh, add some hydrochloric acid into the first test tube and doing so we see that thermodynamically there is a shift from this reaction going to the side with the blue compound. So now we're making a lot more cobalt chloride complex, the complex that is blue. Okay, and, and very clearly you should be able to figure out in your lab who is being used up and who is being increased. Alright, so in test tube 2 we're going to add some calcium chloride. And we'll add some more. And we should be looking at the bottom of the test tube. And the calcium chloride is going to dissociate into its ion. That's important you understand to the calcium plus two and the chloride negative ions. All right, calcium's a salt. All right. And as I probably bring this closer to us, we can see that the bottom of the test tube show, shows a favored thermodynamic pathway, meaning we see a shift toward the blue side. We are making a lot more of that cobalt ion complex with the chloride ion. So clearly you are now shifting one way. Now of course there's none of chloride ions in the cold test tube go, but right where the salt is you can clearly see there is some shift that favors the formation of the blue complex. And you should be able to know which side we're shifting and in your lab or which reactants and products are going up or going down because of that. All right. So that's one and two test. Now we're going to grab number, test tube number one again and we're going to do another test here at some point. All right so here comes test tube one again which we can see is clearly favored all right with uh, the blue compound. All right and uh, now we're going to add some water. All right, so now adding some Poland spring water, and again, this is not a, uh, uh, they didn't pay us any money to do this, but we're going to add some water. And by adding water, you can see definitely a shift toward the pink uh, cobalt complex. And that pink cobalt complex um, is on the reactant side. So again, you should be able to figure out where the reaction is shifting to by uh, whether we're making a pink or blue complex here. All right. And again, these colors are due to crystal field theory where we're drawing in the ligands, okay, into the D's orbitals and causing the D's to split. Pretty cool stuff to go through. So test tube three here, 
Okay, we're gonna add hydrochloric acid, which we've done already before, and we're gonna see a shift um, to, that favors um, the cobalt chloride complex, and you should know what that shift does. And now, part of the same test now is we're gonna add some silver nitrate. Notice the silver nitrate bottle, when it comes into play here, has a, is a um, dark bottle that prevents uh, light from getting in too much because the silver ions are affected by the light. In any case, you see me adding some silver nitrate, and clearly I see some solid developing, as we like to call a precipitate. And that precipitate is building up as I add more silver nitrate, and I also see a color change here. Okay, as I keep adding more silver nitrate, uh, I see it going from this blue complex back to the pink side. So I definitely see a pink color developing here as we add some silver nitrate. So I'm probably going to bring this up to you and see up close and personal what this looks like. And there she is. And you can see the solid on the bottom. The solid definitely has a white color, okay? But that's not what's affecting the color. This definitely went pink, showing us a definite shift in equilibrium to the um, cobalt complex that has a pink color. And you should make the appropriate markings in your lab. Something about making this precipitate cause the shift to favor the formation of the um, reactants, the original reactants. Something to think about there. What did we do there that caused that reaction to shift to the uh, side that produced the pink complex? Silver nitrate. Mm, you should know something about the uh, solubility, uh, rules of solubility, and what the silver ion must have done. Okay, so our final test now is to put our test tube 4, which is favoring the pink side, and I'm bringing a thermo, um, an infrared thermometer to show you that the um, room or the board behind you is 25.5 degrees Celsius and the, and the water I'm bringing here is 76 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to use a hot bath. And in this test we're going to put the test tube 4 in the hot bath and we're going to see what kind of color change will happen. Now we're changing the temperature here so we're actually going to shift not so much the equilibrium, in truth, we're actually changing the equilibrium position to favor one side or the other. By adding heat, okay, we are definitely shifting the equilibrium to a new position that's favoring, if you can see, the blue co uh, cobalt chloride complex. All right, and that tells you something about where the heat is. You know something about uh, Le Chatelier's principle. You increase the temperature, the reaction is going to shift to always do the opposite. Its response is opposite. So it looks like it's shifting in response to increasing the temperature, which means it's trying to probably relieve that temperature. And this should tell you where the heat is in this reaction. Okay, is the heat go on the reactant side or the product side? One of the questions in the lab, okay, is to find out whether the Ford reaction is endo and exo, and right here these tests are telling you. All right, so in my second test, I'm going to add a cold water bath, and this test should also sh support my understanding. Uh, so here I have my uh, infrared thermometer, I get about 9 degrees of my ice bath here, and I put my, uh, my warm solution back into the ice bath, and we can probably guess what's going to happen here, and lowering the temperature, the reaction is going to shift to do the opposite probably to to um, increase the temperature, so it's going to favor whatever shift of equilibrium that favors um, the increase in temperature or the exothermic way. You should know decreasing the temperature is the stress, the reaction is going to change its equilibrium to, to do the opposite, and that hint of what's happening here should tell you from the ice bath test and the um, hot bath test where the heat goes in the reaction side. Is the Ford reaction exo or is the Ford reaction endo? All right, and we can clearly see that the cold water bath made uh, and shifted the equilibrium to favor the red complex. All right, and that's essentially this lab. From these uh, tests, independent tests, you should have be able to figure out where the shifts have occurred and who is increasing and decreasing and definitely whether the Ford reaction is endo or exothermic. All the players involved are taking 
their bows here. I guess I left the water out. Hope this helped.